Hey guys, welcome back to Live with Reality with Trisha and Kylie as a part of the Russell Hand Show where we're bringing you all of the spoilers on everything Big Brother 22 related, including the live feeds. And we're going to talk a little bit about last night's show. Don't forget to, if you're watching live with us, we will be catching your comments as we go through the episode. So be sure to drop us some comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel to get all of the latest updates um, every time Russell and we go live. Um, today we have OG All-Star, played with Kaser and Janelle two times, Vito King, 2006 Sexiest Male of Reality TV, and a reality Tweet of the day champion, soon to be dad, the man himself, the last name I can't say, James Ryan. <laughs> Welcome to our show. We're so glad to have you. That was probably my favorite introduction ever. <laughs> I appreciate that. You guys have done a long list of stuff. Yeah, we, we made sure to get a wide coverage of all of your accomplishments. <laughs> <laughs> only BB related. Oh, but yeah, the only the dad thing, so yeah, I appreciate there you that. Go. <laughs> so, Last night on the show, we got to see the veto comp happen, um, but we saw a little bit of Kevin come out. We haven't seen him too much this season, um, but we saw a little bit more of Kevin. So, Kylie, tell us about. Um, yeah, you've been seeing people talk about it on Twitter, but it's really evident this episode. As soon as we get the nominations in, Kevin's in the DR crying, which is pretty typical, and um He's a great comparison to a human Eeyore. Like, he's always sad. He always has this just woe is me look on his face. And he's just a drag. And he's the captain on my team, guys, just so y'all know. I drafted this. Have guy. you ever met Kevin in person in real life? James? I've met Kevin. Yeah, I love Kevin. Um, he was actually one of the people that I was hoping would be on this show. And, you know, some of the rumors of the cast are starting to come out. Um, pretty disappointed in, you know, his gameplay so far with the exception of last night, just because, but then again, with the house being, you know, having two object targets every single week, it's kind of good to just shut up and kind of sit back like he's been doing. But the fact that he played super hard for Fido, um, and a pretty strenuous comp uh, competition, one that you would normally see reserved for like a, a head of household or something. I appreciated that because that made me think that, okay, he may not have teamed up with team old school, but he had that old school mentality where he wasn't going to let the house dictate his fate. You know, yeah. no matter how many times people tell you you're safe, if you're on the block, you're not safe. You know, you don't know the twist. You don't know what production's planning. You don't know. You can't trust anybody. So the right. fact that he went all out to win that veto was pretty yeah, impressive. I mean, I was pretty impressed with him <laughs> when he lost half of the vines or the strings, whatever they were, yeah. and was man managed to get back on them. I was like, okay, Kevin, show out. Yeah, it was um, it was pretty impressive. And in fact, David hung around too. Um, yeah. The most disappointing thing about last night's episode was Kaser dropping off first. You know, yeah. when, I, when I saw that, it was just, it was, it was heartbreaking. You know, if you watch spoilers, you know that he didn't win. But to go first out, on you know one of your last couple of nights in the house to me it was disappointing but also you know he's the 40 year old dad now so he's not you know in the same shape that he was years ago so yeah. we talked about you being the veto king how do you think you would have done in that competition oh well this is one i definitely would not have won um well i don't know what their last time was you know i'd like to think that i could have manipulated it but i lost like the Right here, there's missing the tendon in my bicep. Mm -hmm. I lost that a couple of years ago. So um, there's not the strength is pretty much back to like 75, 80, eh, 80, 85 percent. But um, so hanging on that stuff would have been um, pretty difficult. You know, left arm still good, but the right arm missing that tendon. Yeah. So it snapped back up in there. Yeah, I know. As even a 30 year old, I would not be able to hang on the flexibility that that game that veto comp requires i would have i would have been right there with caser well it's a lot of core strength too you know what i mean and um if he's been sitting at a desk for his job for a long time you definitely lose a lot of that because you're you know not focusing on lower back and abs but uh <clears throat> hoping that would have helped keep me up there for a little bit longer but first of all i was 29 and 6 and 30 and 7 so don't 
30 is not an excuse. Your 30s are the best years of your life. I'm a mom of three and that just takes everything out of you like everything that you would have typically at 30 I've lost in three little humans <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so you know like superpowers <laughs> yeah now you were talking about waking up and you know working out and being here in time because you know you are two hours behind us but I mean you know here in a few a few weeks you're going to have a little person that completely dictates your life like yeah. for real they're the complete boss so uh you yeah know, I have you know, a dog that kind of runs me right now so I can't imagine when when the baby's born yeah it's uh it's a wake-up call for sure you know and if anyone a little... sees the door I'm sorry no I was just gonna say I, we both have little humans that run our lives so <laughs> congrats I was gonna say, if anyone sees the door open and close in the background, it's not a ghost. It's my dog who is so cute. Yeah, he opened it and then he likes to lay up against it, but then he'll get upset and be begging to get out. That's great. So speaking of age, Memphis has um, taken a number this season, and we know from the feeds that he's injured, and we kind of covered that on our previous episodes about how he's injured, and we've been speculating all week what happened to Memphis and last night the only thing that we could see that maybe caused this injury was when he got scared of the the paint shooting out or the slime shooting out um of the cannon so we yeah we know that he competed in the veto or did not compete in the veto he hosted it but he makes a comment of oh gosh I tweaked my back <laughs> when the when the first yeah. shot went out <laughs> So um, when I was talking to Janie before the season, um, I was telling her to go in there and just pretend that she had injuries. And we had talked about some x-rays she had for when she hurt herself a couple months before. I'm like, I would release those, you know, right before you go in the house, make everyone think that, you know, <laughs> let them know that you're old. And you're not the same, you know, copy. I don't Memphis um, personally friends with him. I'm hoping it's strategy, but tweak back and you're, you're fucked if that happens. So I'm yeah. hoping that uh, it hopefully it's just some strategy, like he's trying to take himself out. But I know he does have some back problems. So if he really tweaked it, he's going to be hurting. We call yeah, it I mean, Christmas strategy. Uh, she rolled a scooter all the way to final three when she played. Um, and I don't know if it's strategy for Memphis, but it's definitely something he should ride out. A hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I would, he, he completely took the target off of himself from his HOH, so... But see, a lot of people were criticizing him for uh, his head of household because he was so direct. That's just him, you know, and I didn't see a problem with it. I thought it was funny that he called out David. Um, right. At first, when everyone was like, oh, we called him boy, I was like, what the fuck? But then you realize that that was just an internet lie. Yeah. So trash ass humans. <laughs> but um, he, David has to earn their respect. You know, everyone in there went through a lot. You know, they went through, you know, even if they were evicted earlier, they still played the game. They still took the abuse. They still played in cops. They still got beat up. You know, David didn't do that. And unfortunately, although he was one of the people who I thought was rightfully deserved a second chance, he's, he's proving to us that it's been quite a disappointment. Yeah, I yeah. think we're all on board with, uh, well, you know, we Memphis is HOH, and we're hearing all these Twitter rumors of, um, God, his HOH speech was brutal and he really tore into David and da 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 da. And then we see it and it's a little bit different. Um, yeah. I think as the weeks have gone on, we are now kind of all with Memphis. Like, yeah, you were definitely seeing something that we weren't seeing on the feeds or on the show where he definitely needed to prove himself. Um, and in, our, in my opinion, he's yet to do so. Correct. If I was um, in Memphis' situation and um, shit, if I was in the house right now and D David pissed me off, every time I saw him, I would be like, yo, you took somebody else's spot. I'd be like, damn, they brought you back instead of like Annie from Big Brother 10, the saboteur she deserved to. They brought you back instead of Kenny from your season. Like, how do you deserve to be here over? And I would just go down the list of people and just trash him constantly. Why not? <laughs> right, you, have nothing, you have nothing else to do in there. And if you can break down a person. Do it. That's part but of the that's game. not, not that's bullying. not the that's not the new school mentality. You know, they all are kumbaya and want to be best friends and you know, we don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. But the fact of the matter is David is really outmatched and he is the only one that I have a true problem with. Like, you know, Survivor did a second chances season. Sure, David would be great for something like that, but 
calling it all stars and inviting David, he's definitely out of his league. Yeah, I mean the all star thing. I feel like I've kind of beaten to death, but it's it's unfortunate that's the, the name they use. But it's it's marketing, and they have to. You know, what are they gonna? They can't really tell. <laughs> you know, in case they were throwing you on a second chance this season, or any of these other people, like when they pitched it to Derek and Dan and Rachel, it had to be listed as all stars. You know, um, yeah. maybe if uh, we're still fucking locked down with this COVID bullshit, that hopefully they can do a second chance this season in January, bring back all the first yeah. couple of victors or the people who got wrongly screwed. And yeah. hopefully David doesn't come back when they <laughs> when they do <laughs> that. Yeah. Let's let him sail off into the sunset. Um, I like this question over here from Alex. Um, he says, for Survivor comparison, James, do you watch Survivor? No. No. Okay. <laughs> I don't watch Amazing Race. I, I, it's like Big Brother I watch because it's become an addiction and a part of, you know, <clears throat> my yeah. life apparently. But um, I watched, so when I first got off Big Brother, I watched Survivor because everyone's like, oh, you would have done great on Survivor. But at that point, they weren't doing the crossovers. Mm-hmm. And I remember meeting all these great people from Survivor. And when I tried watching it, I was just like, it pissed me off because I was like, man, I'll never have the chance to do this show when I would have loved to do this. Had been given an original choice, that would have taken Survivor over Big Brother. Hands okay, down. Okay, that's awesome. Um, so one Survivor winner is Tyson Apostle. And on his season of Survivor, he played up a shoulder injury because from his previous seasons, he was known as a comp beast. And he played up this shoulder injury like, Oh my gosh, I can't even compete. And he goes on to win the show. So Perfect. Alex is wanting to know, do you think Memphis's injury could be similar to something like that? Can he ride it out to the end? Well, um, I do want to see Memphis go over really far. Um, as for winner, when's Kaser and Janelle leave, those are the two that I wanted to see win. Um, Memphis would, is definitely, you know, personal friend, so I'd like to see him get far if he could win. But I want to see the best game player win. If that turns out to be a strategy, and he makes the final three and all of a sudden he crushes everyone. Yes, let it be. But um, I really want to see a good game. Um, try not to have any favorites after this point. I just, <laughs> we need something. We need something. Yeah. We need chaos. We need the show to open up. Yeah, for sure. Me and Kylie joke on our show that we are going to say the opposite of what we want to happen because we what we want to happen never happens. Um, obviously, with Janelle going home, um, with the big alliances forming, Kaser going home, which is the most boring, uneventful thing that could happen, is happening. Um, we've talked about how frustrated we are with Enzo um, saying he's going to make a big move and then clowning us all out and his big move is getting out Kaser, the the easiest person to get out. He has literally no one in this house. Yeah, I don't the uh the Enzo <clears throat> was someone that definitely looking forward to seeing him back in the house, but he's playing the same game he played before. He's not playing to win. Um clown is perfect. I mean Memphis Memphis blah, blah, blah. I see Grandpa Memphis right there on the bottom so I keep saying that. <laughs> but Enzo definitely is this season's clown. Um, the game he's talking is just ridiculous and it's stupid because he's not doing shit. Yeah. You know, he had a chance. It, it's different if you're kind of, if everything's going your way and you don't know about these other alliances, you don't, you know, the moment they figured out about Danny, how is she not a viable option? You know, the fact that, and this is what is so upsetting because the fact that he put up Keisha shows that he doesn't even understand the game. Because if anything were to happen, if there was a, a flip, you've lost your girlfriend, you've lost your alliance member. Why put someone that you don't want to go home potentially on the block in a season of All Stars? You yeah. know, it just, I get it with, the, with new casts that are, you know, they're still trusting in this and that. But these are All Stars, they're supposed to know better. Right. And it just, you, Not only you, you want to never- go home. But they, they also already know, they should know each other for the most part. Everyone kind of knows who each other is and how these how they play. Um, I completely agree that putting Keisha up was a mistake on Enzo's part. And now putting C- Christmas up has been, is just, well, I don't know what he's doing. All right, I mean, so you say they know how they play, but Danny Donato, you know how she plays. You can't trust her. You know you can't trust Nicole for Enzo, especially these people have been targeting females the entire time. You know, you don't know how, and I'm speaking from Enzo's perspective, you don't know how Bailey plays or Davon plays, you know, because they haven't had power 
an opportunity to do things like this. You know, so you're looking at four people right there who you're not sure exactly how they would vote. Ian, love him, but you know he's shady. Yeah. It's just, it doesn't, there's all these different factors that, you know, you have to, to figure out. So the easiest thing to do is just put up two people you want to go home. Right. Plus, Danny and Nicole have been playing very personal. You know, you look at all the bullshit with Janelle. Why put two people that are going to vote the same way in the jury? You split them up. If you backstab them, you know, uh, once you get to jury, you've lost their vote because they're taking it personal. You know, these aren't people who think, uh, for the most part, about the game. It's everything is petty, 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 petty. So I would get rid of one of them now. Why not? Yeah, Plus, I mean, we're two winners there. Two winners in the house. Yeah, and they're and they're going after Kaiser. The guy it who hasn't made it to the cluster in four trips. Right. Exactly. This makes no sense, but they continue to target him. And now, you know, we've wow. talked about it a lot. Like I, you know, we were telling you before, um, we get some hate because we are Nicole Franzel. Um, we're not going to say haters, but Nicole Franzel, we throw, some sh- we throw some shade on her. Um, but as soon as it was lined up for Janelle to go out, we've seen Nicole switch her hate over to Bailey because of the two tries and two guys comment. So once again, she's still p- playing personal. Um, you know, it's, it's nothing new and she's going, it's going to turn around. And it's going to be on Danny eventually too. So one of yeah. the we're getting from the comments is that Nicole Franzel is actually playing a really good game. What are your thoughts on that? I don't. Yes. Well, it's, it's it's difficult because I'm looking at it from the perspective that literally for anyone but Kaser and Janelle, it's been a, it's been an easy month. You know, mm-hmm. they've been the only ones that are targeted. You know, Keisha was nominated, gave two skits, happily happily walked out of the house, didn't try to save herself. It was just a, a way. I know everyone loves Keisha and she's an awesome person, but that to me, she shouldn't have been in the house. She didn't care. She didn't even try. Didn't fight. Didn't compete. Didn't. You know, didn't do anything. Just like, all right, take my check. I'm going home. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Nicole Anthony. I was. I'm gonna get on that. You know, amazing person in real life, but just yeah. completely outmatched, completely outplayed. Um, just, just, she just got beat up and tossed out the front door. So it's like, yeah, there's a lot of people playing good games because they're, they're still in the house. But is she developing a long-term game? I don't think so. And that's where you have people that are developing long-term strategies, such as Tyler. I think Bailey is developing and playing that long game. Ian is looking for that. Um, I was thinking Davon until uh, I saw David blow up her game. David definitely does not have a long-term strategy. And uh, he can probably can find a diary room half the time. So... <laughs> Danny, I thought was playing an excellent game until you know she decided to tell everyone about it. But um, I don't think Nicole is playing that long term game because everybody knows that you know she's putting all this personal petty stuff out there. But she's, we'll see. She's she's literally doing the exact same thing she did on her first two seasons. Yes, this time she does not have the showmance to hide behind, but she's just sitting back. She is going to get far. I mean, nobody's really targeting her yet. So, I mean, props for that, but she's not doing anything game-wise. Like, I, I don't think you can say she's playing a good game because she's not playing a game. She's just there well, hanging out. When the people are asking you, like, when they say that, oh, Nicole is blah, 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 ask them what moves she's done, you know? Right. Like, what has she done? The thing is... That- <clears throat> Ahead, they claim right that they so their claims are that she is behind every single person that's gone home. So she wanted Janelle out. She she got Janelle out. That this these are their hot takes. <laughs> Guess what? Every single person right. wants everyone else out of there. That's how the game works. You know, there's only going to be two left one day, and that's kind of how you get there. But uh, <laughs> <clears throat> this, this, where I see Nicole going out is obviously someone. Um, Whoever is going after Danny is going to have to put up Danny and Nicole. Um, if Danny wins, takes herself off, Nicole goes home. You know, Danny has a lot better argument uh, for people to keep her because she is um, a better player. I mean, what's Nicole's argument going to be, you know, to keep her over Danny? That she's a winner, I guess. That's about the only thing that she has that Danny doesn't have. You know, she right, have which that is target. not a reason you keep someone in the house. <laughs> so. Right. You wouldn't want to keep her because she's a winner. Yeah, like you already won the spot. Yeah. 
She All seems right, so we'll really close with Cody, though, and that seems to be, I mean, just like the wall yeller, which is the wall yeller. Let's talk about that for a second because I feel like normally we see the wall yeller, the whatever, and it people kind of brush it off or not as many people are in the backyard to hear it. I feel like this wall yeller kind of has gotten through to some people. Like Ian is starting to really – question Nicole because like because of the things this wall yeller said well also with a typical season they don't know them outside of the house there wasn't mm -hmm. free game alliances there wasn't strategies going into the house because you already know these people and you've already been communicating with them so that's why this um <clears throat> wall yeller is making more of an impact but I just like to say that I'm really over everyone complaining about this Derek and Dan strategy ruining all-stars Every single person in the house pre-gamed, okay? We don't know the extent. You know, everyone's speculating, oh, Dan and Derek, da -da 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 -da, like flew people on their private jets to a hidden island and had, you know, meetings with diagrams. And No, that's not how it happened, all right? If people that aren't your favorites pre-game better than your favorites, that's just the way it worked out. You know, you can't be mad at anyone but your favorites for not doing it to the same level that everybody else did. And you just kind of got to get over it. It's part of the game. The people we should be, you know, kind of upset with or at least have a point of contention is production for not introducing these pregame alliances into the show somehow. They got a lot of great writers on that show. They should have sat down with these people, had them talk about who their pregame alliances were. It's easy. They signed contracts saying they're not going to pregame. Mm -hmm. So you can be like, yo, let's talk about those pre-games or here's that, you know, <laughs> contract you signed saying you owe us $5 million if you violate. At least that's what it was back in All-Stars, you know? So yep. get these things out there, work them into the show, work them in so the, the house gets, all it's going to do is create chaos. Like you shouldn't care about their feelings. Once they're in there, they've signed their lives away to you, CBS. Like get in there, threaten them with some shit, spill out some of the alliances, have Julie do an alliance show, <laughs> you know, where she's like, so... Cody, Nicole, blah, 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 blah. bring bring out everybody, you know, and then just be like, David, we're sorry you have no friends. No one reached out to you. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. That's you were, you didn't know anybody else, so. Yeah, that's interesting that you bring that up because also going back to Survivor this past season, they had um, all winners and they actually showed clips from like a poker game that three or four of the people had played in where they said, Hey, if there's an, if there's ever an all winter season, we should work together. And that was actually brought into the real game and they showed it. They were like, Oh, well the poker Alliance and people targeting targeted them specifically because they were part of the poker Alliance. And, you know, the survivor producers did decide to show that. So I like that. Well, I think it's, only, it's only fair to the fans and to the viewers and to the people in the house. You know, because obviously there are people that um, definitely adhere to their contracts. And the first All-Stars, Howie and Daniel Reyes didn't talk to anyone until, you know, it was announced that <clears throat> they were the, you know, we were the 20 people. But um, for the most part, you shouldn't hinder the people that are sticking to their contracts. I doubt anyone this season, you know, adhered to that. But it's not fair to the fans also, especially the casuals that just watch the, uh, the show you don't understand where these relationships are coming. So, you know, the first week in the house seemed like we were already a month into it because everybody had their connections. Everything was established. You know, we're all thinking old school versus new school, but in reality, all the alliances that were set up beforehand kind of destroyed that before they walked in the door. It was 14 piece of people versus Janelle and Kaser. Yeah, for sure. All right, 12, because Keisha wasn't really there and David doesn't count. Yeah. And that's done. <laughs> Well, it's just, it's, it's being real. It's not, I mean. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's completely, completely unmatched. Accurate. And it's one of those things where everyone's complaining that this is not really All-Stars. If he had gone into Sequester and watched the seasons and knew what he was getting into, or at least had some sort of strategy, I think a lot of people would be like, oh, yeah, this is great. Get this guy, you know. It was good that we gave him a shot over some of these other people. But, you know, yeah. he didn't do that. He's auditioning for Love Island. Ridiculous. <laughs> Frustrating. So when we when we get out of the episode and get into the feeds, um, we see that Enzo's talking to Bailey about what's the next move if she wins HOH, um, what's she gonna do? And and they talk about 
the next move is to send Bailey, I mean, to send Danny home. What, what do you think about, you know, that? I know that Danny is a big target. And, I mean, do you think, I don't think that they're talking about putting Nicole and Danny up next to each other, though. No, because they don't have common sense. Um, <clears throat> getting, getting rid of Danny is, is a great move for anyone in the house because she's a good player. She's a great player. And she's this season's villain so far. You know, um, <clears throat> I think the hinky votes was, was whatever. It doesn't matter because, you know, you pin it on Bay and Day and they are friends with Janelle. So who cares that they voted for? Her? Like if I was in the house, I would have voted for Janelle to stay. Like, why the hell wouldn't I? It doesn't matter. You had an overwhelming majority that were going to send her home. If it's close, then they could mean something. But the fact that she asked Cody about it and then lied about it was just poor gameplay. So you know she's a liar. You know she's manipulative. Get rid of her. But it's really going to – we'll see if it's a big move um, or a good move when they put her up next to someone. Right. Like an actual player, not just oh, another pawn from our alliance. Put up Kevin right. again. <laughs> just it doesn't make sense. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see if they're, you know, able to put Danny up um, and then what happens, what happens there. It, I, I really think it depends on who wins HOH, of course, um, if it's someone from that big alliance. But I, I would be interested to see, you know, like if Ian wins, does he actually turn on Nicole like he's talked about? Um, I think that that would be probably one of the most entertaining weeks of Big Brother. If Ian ends up turning on Nicole, who's called Nicole has called Ian, you know, that she's able to control him. Danny has talked about his autism. Um, so I don't know if CBS will air any of that if this happens, but I think it, this would be one of the most, like, justice being served if Ian puts up Nicole and Danny. Yeah, I think that would be a great move for Ian. Um, I think he's a phenomenal player. So Danny's got a lot of stuff they could air. The dance, monkey dance comment to Kevin, which is bullshit. The autism. Um <clears throat> She's lucky right now that CBS, which is kind of bullshit because CBS played that clip of Bailey last night yeah. um, going after Kaser. And obviously the, the internet just went fucking nuts on it. And you have the typical fans that are, you know, Bailey, I knew she was just like this, kind of the assholes of a bunch. But why not show the Danny clip? You know what I mean? Right. Right. I mean, so, you know, Bailey was just kind show, of though. voicing <laughs> Bailey's just kind of voicing her frustrations about Kaser, not anything personal or over the line. Just, hey, you know, like I, I've got stuff going on that you don't know about, too. So don't tell me to not be stupid or whatever it was he said exactly. Um, yeah, well, Kaser's but, just trying to help everyone. That's the problem. Right. He's too good at heart. He literally he knows he's being wronged and he wants to help everybody, everybody else where he should just be like, you know what? There's no chance for me here. I'm just going to have fun. Get to go back to see my wife and kid, and I'm out of here. So the, the house is trying to convince Kaser to blow up at yeah, they can fuck off. the game. <laughs> they can literally fuck off. Like, they literally shit on him, you know, for the month that he's been in there. They shit on Janelle. They ostracized those two. Um, there's no reason for him to help anybody else in the game. Be cool. Talk to them. Hang out with them. Have fun. But... You're not going to use me to help your game when all you did was sabotage mine. Nope. Bye. And yesterday on our show, we talked about how, and give us your thought on this. We don't even think that that would actually be a good strategy for the, the rest of the house. If Kaser blows up this big alliance and starts, you know, naming every single person, then it's just out there and that's just going to push that group closer together. It could do a few things. One, um, depending on who they are, um, they could flip it and just be like, you know, Case was going out, he's bitter, you know, da, 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 da. they could really flip it, make it something personal about him, be like, oh, I don't understand why he made up these lies and da, 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 da. He had no idea what was going on in the house. That's why he's left pre jury four, four different times. I mean, if it was my alliance he called out, <clears throat> then I would do that. I would just be like, really? I had expected so much better from him. This guy's supposed to be good, kind hearted doesn't lie and here he goes the last thing he does in his house is complete bullshit and try to frame all this stuff on us i mean this is not the case here i knew and love like i i really feel disrespected by this and i can't respect him i would pull some shit like that you know why not mm -hmm. yeah got nothing else to do <laughs> yeah no one's gonna does say, oh man you're right you <laughs> ratted us out oh no our alliance is over no <laughs> these people are gonna lie their asses off and he can't defend himself afterwards 
Right. So, um, Kaser does feel close to Daily, Daily Day and Bay, um, and he he does give them a little bit of a warning, um, additional warnings. He's kind of talked to them a little bit about this, but we do see him kind of driving this point home that. Cody and Nicole are, he feels that they're running the house and that they need to be very cautious of him if they're in that big alliance, which we know that um, they are. Um, so he warns them about the, the control of the house and what to watch out for. And I, I, my opinion on it is that that's the most he should do is just stop there. Yep. Don't go any further. Yeah, Please. try to look out for the two that have kind of had his back, but everybody else, good luck. There are, there are people that you like, and there are people that are in, in there that you don't like. There's no reason to help the people you don't like. So yeah. it says this piece, and just leave it at that, you know? Yeah, he, we do, do get about the alliance names with numbers in them. <laughs> There's like two types of people in the world, people that believe that there should be numbers in alliance names and people that think that, that it's a curse. Yeah. Didn't work out for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yesterday we do get the official formation of Cody, Tyler, and Enzo. We've been calling them the Brigade 2.0, but now they have the official name of Triple Threat with a three in it. Um, and if one of them goes, they decided that they'll call themselves Double Trouble. <laughs> Super original. Well, Enzo, Enzo is obviously the first person out of that alliance. Like I said, he's playing for fourth again. Um, yeah. He could have really cemented, you know, his place in Big Brother history by pulling a great move this week. You know, if Kaser got saved and Danny went home as fans, well, we, we would have loved this. Every single person that's saying, I'm turning this show off, would have been like, ah, you know, they would have been going crazy. We've been how we were yelling in the backyard, Super Bowl, baby. That's what it would have been. It would have been, you know, an internet explosion. But instead, Enzo's going to clown. Yeah. But seriously, think about that. How epic would that have been if he's just like, nah, man, play my blah, 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 stand in Europe. Yeah, you know, we well, were so hopeful okay. because he did. You know, he Tyler was in his ear, and he goes to bed that night, and he's like, oh, fuck, what should I do? Like, you know, he's bringing up some good you points. Know. And what we were like... Do? We were like, oh, yes, like, please, there is a slight chance that this is going to happen. And then, of course, disappointment. <laughs> because He wants he <clears throat> wants Christmas to make that move next week. He has a long conversation with her uh, yesterday, the day before. And he's like, I'm not going to do it, but how about you do it next week? Yeah, yeah. it's whack. Um, I see there in the comments, somebody was like, Kaser and Janelle sent their games by immediately gravitating towards each other in the house. Um <laughs> Come on, man. Like, what are they supposed to do? Pretend they're not friends? They were on two seasons together. They sunk their game, I think. Um, Kaser was one of the later ads. He didn't have time to pregame. Um, he's also been out of the Big Brother circle for quite some time. So I doubt he's even watched a lot of these other shows or seasons until he got into sequester. I know he did his research then. So he probably didn't, you know, have a lot in common with a lot of these people because he's never reached out to them. I think when they were... Uh, what week was it? It's all kind of running together now. But when uh, was it Tyler that put them up together? Yeah. Or whoever, uh, whoever it was, they should have gone yes. to him together. I didn't like that they went separately and tried to plead their case because Tyler's smart. He's one of the better game players, you know, in Big Brother. Um, he's got a good read on everything. If they had approached him together, I think with their strengths and weaknesses combined, they could have. They might have had a chance to convince him, hey, why not work with us? There's a lot of bigger people in this house, you know, but going separately, I really think kind of hurt it because it's easy to fight off one person. But when you have two people that are both incredibly well versed in Big Brother and strategy and are just as likable as Janelle and Kaser, I think it would have had a bigger effect than just going, you know, independently. Yeah. Right. We also have this comment from Stephanie that says CBS also did it to them by not putting more power duos in the game. And we know that, um, or we speculate anyway, that Josh and Casey were also supposed to be in the game. And that would have opened up, you know, there was a lot of speculation before the season started that this was going to be a duo season, such as Bailey and Tyler were together, Josh and Casey, there was Janelle and Kaser. Um, and do you think had there been more duos that Kaser and Janelle maybe not have been such a target, but because they were so close, that did kind of put this target on their back? 
Well, <laughs> there's a dog in the door. Um, so the thing about duos is that's more of just like a fan thing because in reality, um, all these people, for the most part, know each other and talk to each other outside of the house. Um, <clears throat> if you had paired it up by seasons, you're still going to have different groups of people that are incredibly good friends outside the house that would have been working together. I just think the problem with this season is that a lot of what we all consider all stars couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. You know, if Rachel Riley was in the house by herself without a duo, people are still going to target her because they know, you know, she's a phenomenal player. You know, if Janelle was in the house by herself, she's still going to be targeted. The yeah. fact that they're going after Kaser this week shows that their lack of understanding for how Big Brother works because Kaser's not a threat. You know, he's not a threat and he's a likable person. So getting rid of someone who's not a threat and a likable person you can just enjoy in the house doesn't make any sense, you know, strategy wise. So I don't know if the duos necessarily would have made a huge difference. Um, it made a difference with those two because Kaser, once again, has no contact with a lot of Big Brother people and therefore he was already at a disadvantage. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. No, I could definitely see that um, point of view, but, and, and Nicole, you know, makes claims at the very beginning of the season that, you know, we speculate, put a target on Janelle's back. And I just wonder if that target would have been there if she didn't say that Janelle was spreading rumors about her. So, so in the pregame, she's saying that, you know, Janelle, Janelle was putting out into the world, her and evil Dick were putting out into the world that, Derek and th- this that was when the Derek group chat happened and and Nicole had all of these alliances and da 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 da, da and and that's when the feud between her and Janelle started. Well, if that's the case, then I guess we get to blame Evil Dick as much as he wants to blame Derek for this. Maybe Evil Dick should have been putting out all stuff about Janelle and Kaser or blaming Janelle and Nicole. But in reality, um, I don't know if that's what he was putting out there or how it was working. Um, we don't follow each other on Twitter. So um, if that's the case, then looks like pre-gaming bit more people in the ass than we thought it did. But that's what was my point earlier in the show is that that's what we have to look at. That everybody had the same advantages and disadvantages for the most part, exception of David and Kayser. But um, everyone's going to pre-game. They're going to talk shit. If you do a better job at it than somebody else, that's not their fault. You know, they all had yeah. the same chances. So is there something like what, personal. what could Janelle have done to pregame better, do you think? Um, the thing I keep hearing is that Janelle pregamed uh, too much, that she was communicating with everybody and that um, there were other house guests helping her out. Um, I'm not going to obviously divulge who those other house guests were. <laughs> um, I may have been one, but um, it's just one of those things where <clears throat> Janelle is a target. And the reason everyone, you know, when those big brother people get together, we always talk about, if there was an All-Stars and Dan and Derek are in there, they go one and two, you know, because if there's a battle back, if there's fan something, they're going to come back because they're very well liked. They're, they're winners. Like, these are the things you, you want to target people for. And with Janelle being in there and then with her, you know, popularity being a thousand times greater than all the other house guests combined, you want to get rid of her because if there's a battle back, she's coming back. If there's anything with a fan, vote, she's getting, you know, so anything you can use to get to target these people and happens. What Janelle could have done better was they could have won some competitions. You know, think about it. The moment they had power, they could have been able to pull people in. Yeah. Um, and it's been unfortunate that Janelle and Casey weren't able to take any head of households or vetoes or anything, you know, and it's very disappointing because that's what they needed just one moment with power they could have been able to bring people in but it didn't happen um so you're bringing up the twist is um so do you think there's any possibility that tonight we get a twist that is going to keep caser as an option to come back into the house like a la caitlin's puzzle (laughs) i i really don't think so um yeah if they were going to do a twist to save someone, it would have been Janelle. Putting Kaser back in there, um, he's just going to go home the following day. Because yeah. now he's going to get, we're seeing these aren't game players. They're not thinking like that. It's literally, this is the easy thing to do. 
let's go for it. Like it's that herd mentality that we've seen in a lot of these uh, late seasons where they're just the big alliance. All right, this is how we're going to knock people off and everybody has to agree with us. And everybody's like, yes, sir. Yeah. Everybody Ask. falls in line. <laughs> falls in line. Um, when we talked about Josh and Casey earlier, I would have loved to have seen them in this house. Yeah. Love yeah. to see them. Mm, yeah, um, we often play the clip on our show of Josh banging pots and pans, and and he was a very polarizing character in Big Brother. Um, we, you have an opinion on him. You either love Josh or you hate him. Um, there's oh, no. <laughs> when uh, on Josh's season, um, I remember <clears throat> being from Miami. I was like, oh, I know this kid exactly. He's you know, mama's boy. He's going to get on his nerves and he'll be gone three weeks, four weeks tops. And Alex Willett, you know, from uh, Big Brother Over the Top, was like, no way, I see him winning. So I bet her fucking dinner that um, <laughs> he wasn't going to win. So I had to take her and Morgan to dinner at Tarbone inside Aria, costing like $400 damn dollars. But um, Josh is one of those people who on the show, I didn't want him to win because I didn't want him to take him to a nice dinner. But uh, in, in after meeting him, I love this guy. I would love to see him on again. He's a 21 year old kid from Miami. Like, yeah. you are going to love him or hate him. But if anything, his tech yeah, he's, he is so entertaining. Um, and I think we're seeing a, a lack of entertainment value this season. The uh, Everyone's just kind of playing this vanilla you know, type of game. And, and Josh was never that person that season had a bad no. rap for, you know, bullying and things of that nature. But Josh would have stirred this house up when he, Mark thought he was on the block against Mark. He thought, uh, well, Mark thinks that Josh is going home, but Josh knows he's a part of this big alliance and Mark is actually going home. And he is just stirring that pot every single day, trying to piss these people off. And I think Josh honestly, yeah. Josh yeah, has definitely he, worked with Taser and Janelle. He's a fan of the show, and I think he definitely would have wanted to work with the legends. Yeah, and I think Josh's experience on the challenge and then coming back to Big Brother would have been interesting because, you know, his first season on the challenge, I was like, okay, you know, he's going to be in over his head. He cries all the time. And then he gets in there and he manages to fit in. And so I'm like, you know, I don't I don't know what it is about him, but he's obviously adaptable. And he's whether growing you, up. He was a yeah. kid, 21, when he went on, you know. Yeah, and whether all, you love him or hate him. There. Yeah, love him or hate him, he's entertaining. So. Yeah. And um, Casey is also a winner, a winner that, you know, was speculated to come on, but, and she has the opposite, you know, she was a good player. She was physical and comps when she needed to be, but she doesn't bring that entertainment value. Um, so we had two completely opposite players that didn't end up on the show. Uh, but we got, we got David y'all with IQ of 187 hanging in there. So <laughs> Thanks, CBS. 187. Yeah, I saw it. Amazing. <laughs> um, I'm, we're not oh. sure if he knows what an IQ is at this point. Yeah. Speculation there. CBS really needs to do like a, a David Bloopers clip for the show. You know? Yeah. Like instead of seeing these bullshit Nicole and Danny friendship stories that literally no fan gave two shits about, we should have seen like a, just a David clip. You know, like not wanting to use veto or not wanting to win veto because if he, it would, well, he didn't want to win the veto because he thought he'd be him, put himself up or he didn't want to win the veto and take Kevin off because he thought that he could go up as a replacement nominee. You know, these type of just blatant disrespect for the game, there right, there, then, there need to be a clip. Yeah, but then they'd have to shit on themselves for bringing him back, like. Okay, guys, we, That's a very good point. we really, we, we really screwed up here, but here's the montage. <laughs> It'd be great for Julie to just read this letter from the producers. Like, we are so sorry. We apologize for this. <laughs> we'll make it up to you guys. Janelle's coming back. 
Yeah. We apologize. We're just yeah. going to swap. That's the twist. We are just twisting, yeah. um, putting Janelle in over David. Um, Janelle actually knows what votes are. And so we're going to put well, her back in. Seven weeks of friendship bracelets for safety or whatever they do. <laughs> yeah. Paul, you can yeah. And we're going to send David over to Love Island. That's where he wants to be anyway. So just switch around. Love Island is actually Chernobyl. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Would are there in um speaking of Love Island, um you mentioned wanting to go on Survivor. If that were to open up, is that a show that you would go on? Because now there's that crossover. You talked about uh, going on it in your younger years. Is that something you would do today? Yeah, I'd go on now. Um it would obviously have to be after a little baby comes. But um yeah. Survivor is one of those things that's 30 days. I think I could definitely get away for that. Um this would have been the perfect season for so many of these, you know, the big brother legends to go because a lot of us, you know, aren't working right now because of COVID, but, um, taking people out of the real world when you're, you know, in your later thirties and forties and you have careers that are established, you can't just leave your job, you know, and your six figure salary to go on big brother to, you know, eat slop and shit. So right. this would have been a great opportunity, except, you know, everyone in the world was having babies and, you know, there's have to be a pandemic taking other people out. So yeah, very unfortunate, um, but it could have been perfect opportunity. You talked about um, earlier being in, you know, pregame and you weren't going to dispose names or anything like that, which we're not going to ask you to do. Um, but did you get a call for all stars? So we had been talking, um, with one of the, or I've been talking with one of the producers since January, February. It was like probing emails and probing questions. And obviously, the first thing that I threw out to them was, "Oh, you know, wifey's pregnant," you know, and kind of went on that. So I don't think that it was directly. I, I don't know. You know, I said that you know we started talking about the baby, and all that stuff. The kind of communication is just kind of yeah. <laughs> dropped off. Where before it was like every email was getting an instant response, and then I mentioned that, and I'm looking forward to you know spending the summer with her, and I'm glad we got this time together where we don't have to work and da da da. I can focus on the prep, and all of a sudden it was like <laughs> three or four well, days before response. So I was like, oh, thanks. all right. <laughs> thanks for that. Thanks. Fun. James couldn't come, so we're gonna call David. But you know, like out. with the. With, with the first All Stars, um, <clears throat> I was, I think, the last person they contacted, and I don't remember if somebody told me that I was the last person they contacted because they didn't trust me to not do pregame alliances. But I had a shit ton of alliances on season seven before I even got the call. Mm -hmm. You know, so <laughs> they were right. But <laughs> it's one of those things that, even with the the show had started at the regular time, it might have been a possibility because the wife and I did talk about it. Um, and she would have gone to stay with her, uh, her parents up in Portland, but mm -hmm. that was also first trimester and now seeing everything she's gone through and just how I'm so happy that I've been here to help her out with whatever she needs and wait on her hand and foot and get her crushed ice at three o'clock in the morning. Because <laughs> of <what she> needs. <laughs> One of those things where I would have been a horrible fucking father to, to leave her by herself during this. But once it got pushed yeah. later, there was no chance because. I mean, for any guy out there that wants to go on Big Brother, if your girl's pregnant and you, you leave her, don't expect her to be home when you come back. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> she would show up. She would not be a wall yeller. She would be a wall jumper in there ready to hunt you down. She'd be like the good Colton. Thing is she's not jumping over any walls pregnant. But, you know, when I came home and everything I have is cleaned out and the locks are changed in the yeah. house. Yeah. <laughs> that would be that. Well, um, thanks for chatting with us today, James, about My all pleasure. things Big Brother. Um, we love your insights, and um, you always have great insight into the game. And um, so I love hearing your thoughts on the hot takes that are going on out there. You're not afraid to give your opinion. Um, so we, we, we have featured <laughs> you in our tweet of the day a few times, which is why we called you a reality tweet of the day champion. Um, <laughs> speaking of our tweet of the day, we you were on CBS last night on their Instagram, so we weren't able to get a good tweet from you, but no worries. 
because Kat Dunn from BB21 did not disappoint. She nice. hit us with this gem at It's Catherine Dunn says, wow. So first Danny went after the queen of Big Brother and now she's after the puppet master. This girl will stop at nothing to get what she wants and has a picture of Raven Walton. <sighs> <laughs> So, you know, we're not real sure if if Danny's going to be able to take over this role from Raven because she's obviously the bomb and <laughs> she completely controlled shit in her season. I so. don't know how you say that with a straight face. So here's the funniest shit. Like Raven is one of those house guests that nobody liked. Nobody. Mm -mm. But literally or liked when she was on the show. I'm sure she's a wonderful person. But um, she provided such great entertainment. And that is where I think fans who bitch and complain about these type of players all the time. Like the serial leader, whatever. Boring, no entertainment, yeah. no nothing. But Raven, between like eating parts of her body on the live feeds <laughs> and, you know, calves and picking this gross shit. <laughs> and her so inverted spine. Her 1,000 1, diseases. And her inverted spine like, and Mensa. <laughs> inverted spine and like, I don't know, she's already died like several times and come back to life. And, but she was seized and so gold, you know? It was just yeah. one of those things where I would I would take a personality like that in this house over um, a lot David. of people. At least it's fun, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I think Arkansas fans need to understand. Fans need to understand that, you know, you may hate on these players, but you're not going to get more of them. If those type of people are going to see they just go on the show to get abused, you know, right. just embrace it. Let yeah. it happen because it's it's great television. Yeah. Uh, I like, oh. I could just imagine Raven being on this season too. And she feeling like she absolutely deserves to be there because she was the queen of her season. She controlled every move that happened. So I would, Wait, can I you would imagine her and David. No, I'm saying, imagine her sitting down with like Ian and just Ian going through her and her trying to explain to Ian how she was the puppet master on her season. I mean, it would have been Steve gold. Gold. <laughs> Ian or, would probably just melt down even having a conversation with her because yeah. he would be like, what? That is not what's happening at all. Like, what are you <laughs> talking about? But then again, if Janelle went home and Raven was still in the house, we would definitely have to burn down a lot. So. Well, I mean, it's that's basically what we have with with David. I mean, you know, David has made had made comments to Jill like, well, how do you even know that? Have, how do we know that you're loyal? Like, bitch, she's in an alliance with someone she's known for 15 years. That's how you know that she's loyal. Like, what? What are you even talking oh. about? Yeah, I would, I would love to see the uh, credit reports between David and Janelle in real life. It'd be quite interesting <laughs> to see that, that your credit's not good shit. It's just, uh, David is this season's Raven. Yeah, he, for sure. He, but he, well, oh, if he tweeted he, that, then I would have fucking re retained You would have made uh, it. Uh, oh, well. Watch me drop it on Mr. Twitter tonight. Mr. Shot. <laughs> Hold that thought. We'll we'll edit it out so whenever the show airs, I, you can still take that gold and put it on Twitter. Ah, nice. <laughs> but uh, now David's Twitter account is amazing. I love that. Oh, um, like I got a on stick figure yesterday for him. We, we have said that whoever is running David's account, he's also been a. We've had him on our tweet of the day a few times as well because whoever's we've said whoever's running David's Twitter account should be in the house over David. <laughs> yeah. Completely. Or maybe next season. The DRs, like I don't know who that person is. We need to find out. Reddit journalist, someone out there, please. We need to know who this person is because we're voting them into the house as a part of the twist. Um, yeah, let him replace up. David. Uh, <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that brings us to the end of our show today. Again, James, thanks so much. Um, Thank you. I'm sorry that I butcher your name every time I say it. My Texas <laughs> accent really gets in the way. <laughs> Just Ryan. Ryan. I know. When I, but the I is so long in Texas language that it sounds like I'm saying Ryan, but I'm really not. Um, when I played that clip back the other day, I was like, I don't even want to post this because it sounds like I'm saying his name wrong and I'm not. In my head, it's right. 
Um, but anyways, the everyone, veto king. <laughs> the veto there king himself, sexiest man uh, of reality TV. Clown. <laughs> um, thank you so much again for joining us today. We had a blast getting your hot takes on everything going on in the house. Keep us up with the Twitter commentary. Um, it does not okay. disappoint. Um, we you. look forward to featuring you in the future. Where can everyone follow you to get that Twitter gold? Uh, at James Ryan, right there. Twitter and Instagram. Oh, and if you're going to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, I would appreciate if when I post stuff about my dog, who is probably the greatest bulldog in the history of bulldog, I want more likes. Like, he is gold. But I post a picture of Chaser and I, or Janelle and I, from 25 years ago, and it gets, you know, 1,000, 1,500 likes. And I post something to my beautiful, look at this nugget. Lock me in. Like, lock them in. Look at 72 him. pounds. Like door jam. <laughs> but bro Negan some likes too. Like four kids. Don't hate. What's his name? Negan from what? Walking Dead. Uh, okay. <laughs> Don't hate on Negan, y'all. Um, we'll feature him in a tweet of the day. We'll hold up a promise to feature him in the tweet of the day one day. Um, and we'll we'll be sure to retweet it um to give you some clout. It's it's all for my son. I'm trying to build him up. <laughs> Uh, all right. So everyone go follow James Ryan at James Ryan on Twitter and Instagram. And while you're out there, give us a follow too at reality underscore T R H S that's R E A L I T E A underscore T R H S on Instagram and Twitter. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Give us a subscribe for notifications every time we go live, um, with a guest and, um, don't forget to drop your comments as a hot take on our next episode. Bye, guys. Oh, and, oh, and on my Instagram, that little link tree, click on that. I got Cameo on there, too. So if you want to get some personalized messages, I'm a cheap one. It's like $15.99 or some shit. So. Oh, yeah. Thank All you. right. Yeah. Y'all get Cameo. Cameos. Y'all know y'all got birthdays, holidays coming up. You want to surprise them with um, all of the hot takes from James Ryan. So <laughs> follow, follow him on Instagram. Get some Cameos. All right. Cheers, guys. Bye, y'all. Thank you again. Appreciate it.